Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode 19 of the Gateway Project, in which we are in mission control. The screens are on, and we are ready to launch the P5 truss. Krantz Kerman is here at the controls in mission control, and he's given the go-ahead. We are go for a launch, and we have liftoff of the P-5 truss, heading for the KSS, the Kerbin Space Station. The P-5 truss will extend the truss assembly on the port side of the station, allowing us to later dock the P-6. The P-6, of course, is the solar array that is currently sticking straight up away in the on the zenith side of the station and has its solar panels deployed. Those will be pulled back in when it's moved. They'll go down on the side on the end of that truss and then we'll deploy them again. And at that point, that port side is going to be done. There's a little tug still on top of it, but when we take that off, we'll deorbit it and then it'll be done. Whoa, 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 gee, oh no. At mission control, we have a problem with the rocket. It is going off course. It is flying backward. We need to do something about this now. Call Jebediah. Jebediah is at Minmus. That's okay. We'll get him on the line. We'll communicate through our Tedris satellites, and he'll take control of the craft, and he'll get it pointed in the right direction, and he'll put it back on course. Thank you, Jebediah. And also a big thanks to the engineers who put in the control software so that we can communicate through to it all the way from Minmus, allowing Jebediah to take command and put the P5 back on track. So we'll just set up our maneuver node here by matching our ascending node and our apoapsis right at the same place, right on top of that opposing orbit. Do the little circularization burn that also changes the inclination at the same time and reduces the fuel cost of that whole maneuver. And then decouple that injection stage while it is still suborbital at 21 kilometers. And now here we can get a good look at that P5 before it heads off to the space station and gets ready to dock onto that end of that truss segment. And here it is. Here comes the space station. We're zooming up beside it. And maybe we're not coming in too fast like we have in the past. Oh, well. I take it back, it was a, It looked like it might have been a, a close call, but it wasn't so bad. We actually were able to slow down just in time before smashing into any solar panels or knocking them away. So now we can shift our little payload here, get it over onto the other side. We're on the wrong side right now. We need to move down past where that end of that assembly is and then get ourselves into position and then come in really carefully because there's a lot of delicate equipment in there. We need to get it lined up just right because it sort of fits in like a hand into a glove and at the same time we have the solar panels that we don't want to bump and we bumped them because we had our solar panels out. That's okay. We'll bring our solar panels back in and we'll try it one more time. No damage done, no orbital debris. We'll slide that in there. All right, easy now and bam. All right, we have our P5 in place. And even though this now technically technically means that we would be able to dock that P6 on here right away. It's got the big docking node. Everything's ready to go. It actually takes in our world 10 more months before that gets moved over there and there's a few missions that are in the way before that can actually take place. Now, I am deorbiting my Leonardo replica. Uh, I said that I wasn't going to name it the Raffaello I think I might be changing my mind because technically the Leonardo is supposed to dock underneath uh, the space station at some point in the future, in some future episode. And the one that I had on there is about to go deorbit. So we can't exactly dock something that has been deorbited, right? I probably should have put parachutes on it because that thing is supposed to be recoverable. Uh, normally in the space shuttle, it would go up in a space shuttle and it would come back down again in the space shuttle after having delivered its cargo. But since I don't have the space shuttles, uh, that means that uh, I have to deorbit it. But if I want it recoverable, it's going to need parachutes. So we, in a previous episode, were supposed to have moved this PMA 
and I noticed that it hadn't been moved in the last episode when I needed to bring up that Cygnus orb. That docked onto the side of the station where the PMA is supposed to be docked, because the PMA was in the location where the orb was supposed to have docked. So basically I got them backward, but now if I ever want to do it again, I'm moving the PMA, it's going up onto the side where it's supposed to be right now, and we'll be good for next time. In fact, I'm going to leave that tug on it right now because this is not technically its, a, its final resting place either. It needs to move one more time in the future, maybe even one or two more times. I'll have to go check my notes. Uh, but I'm going to leave it there for now, even though that might be affecting my part count. Now, I have a very special presentation for you. Uh, a brand new mod came out, which is sort of like a pre-built space shuttle, and it works fairly well. It lifts off, it's a little small, and I'll get to that in a second, but it has a really good liftoff. Uh, it pitches over onto its back really nicely. The only problem I had with it is it doesn't really work very well with deadly re-entry. And once I get a little bit higher, those boosters start to overheat. Now, I probably could go in and tweak some value associated with deadly re-entry to make it not want to overheat anymore. But I don't think I really want to spend any time on that because there's another problem with the shuttle. It's not the right size. I'm doing an ISS replica that's at least 55% the scale of the real thing. And uh, most of the time I'm trying to go with 60%. And here we go, we're starting to overheat and those boosters are going to explode. Well, yeah, minor setback, right? Uh, anyway, 60% scale is gonna require a cargo bay of 2.75 meters by 10 meters to represent the real thing. And the cargo bay on this one is only 2 meters by 4 meters. And so it can only hold the 1.25 meter payloads. And that's not going to cut it for me. I need it to be much larger than that. So I'm not going to try and fix this and make it work. Uh, right here, you can see that I have now lost my orange tank as well. So now I don't have enough fuel probably. I'm not entirely sure because it doesn't have any kind of display on it, but we're going to give it a try and just see how it flies. Well, I'll tell you what, it flies horrible. It's constantly going off its vectors, going one way and another. Eventually it just runs out of fuel. So what's the only sensible thing to do when you run out of fuel? You get out because of course the space shuttle is now about to deorbit and we don't want to go down with it, right? Well, yeah, maybe the Kerbals don't always think that far ahead. Anyway, speaking of deadly re-entry, I have changed the stats on deadly re-entry. Now this is not new. I actually did this way back before I even started any of this. I did this for Zarya launch number one. The very first gateway episode already had these values. Well, one of the things that I did was I increased the shockwave exponent. Uh, normally it is a 1.0, but I increased it. I also changed the heat multiplier and the start thermal value. Now the shockwave, I bumped it up to 1.12, which basically increases the shockwave and makes it a little bit more realistic. But at the same time, that was causing my stuff to just super overheat really fast and just go from no flame effects to suddenly exploding with no flame effects still. So I didn't want that either. What I was interested in was having things come down through the atmosphere and look like they were burning up for a little while and then start losing parts and exploding. So by changing the heat multiplier down to 10 instead of 25, that slows the rate of the heat. Also, I wanted more heat-like effects and so I just bumped that start thermal value down from 700 uh, from 750 down to 700 and now I present to you another multi component single launch min miss mission uh, mission control is this supposed to be doing anything like maybe lifting off let's say for example and now, I present to you another multi-component single launch Minmus mission. And we have liftoff of the Minmus Command Center. This is going to provide us with additional commands. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hold on, mission control. We might be going off our vector a little bit here. Last time, I'm not quite sure what it was, but we 
We readjusted our boosters. Oh, I see. We need struts. Okay, so last time it was boosters. This time it's struts. Got it. All right, let's go back to the mission, uh, the drawing board, and uh, we'll get that fixed right away. Actually, no, not right away. This is actually looking really cool. I'm watching this. We are going to see this thing come down, okay? So it's all broken in bits. I want to see up. Let's look up. Yeah, that's a sky full of debris. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, very Kerbal. Oh, beautiful. Here we go, here we go. Ready? Avoosh! <laughs> oh, nice explosions. Oh yeah. Oh, more, uh, come on, it's raining. It's raining debris everywhere. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. And now I present to you another multi-component single launch Minmus mission. So the first one needed str boosters, the second one needed struts, and this one I'm just trying to be too fancy and show it without all the user interface. And we're going off again. Okay, I have to stop doing this whole like no user interface thing because it's really, really hard to launch this right now without being able to see where my prograde vector is. I guess on the plus side is we get to watch it fall again. And a kaboosh. It is still pretty looking. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, and now I present to you another multi-component, uh, whatever, mid-mission thing. It's probably just gonna, yep, it's just gonna explode again. Uh, okay, well, here, flying upside down now. Awesome. All right, so we needed more boosters more struts, pay more attention to the actual flight, and don't pitch over too early. Okay, so now we know. I mean, did we pack enough Kit Kats? Are the Kerbals pissed off that I don't have enough Kit Kats on board? Or their latest craze, the Corky Bar? I don't know what their problem is right now, but we're gonna try and recover this one. I'm gonna land this, damn it. We're putting this down on the beach and we're sending out the repair crews and we're just gonna launch it again. Uh, I just need to set it down nice and easy. Oh, that's not nice and easy, but that is another really awesome explosion. Oh, so many bits and pieces. Okay. Well, now I present to you another Malefaction Mishmit talk. Whatever. Let's just fly it. Okay. Wait. What are three Kerbals doing on there? Oh, but it's flying so straight. This one's actually lifting off. All right, do we abort the mission or do we keep the Kerbals and just deal with it? All right, we're going to just deal with it. You know what? Bob probably, not Bob, Bill, Bill's on board. I know what happened. Bill conscripted a couple Kerbals to go with him because he heard what happened in the past episode where Jebediah was forced to jettison a whole bunch of gear into orbit, creating a crap ton of orbital debris. And now he's going there himself to oversee the project, make sure there isn't extra in the deployment of this actual lander thing, which you'll find out what that is pretty soon. Uh, and he's going to oversee that. Ooh, a little bit wiggly. Little, all right, ease down, lower throttle. Okay, not so wiggly now. We're good, we're good, okay. So yeah, Bill was not supposed to be on here, but he probably bribed somebody to get on board. So I guess even though we expected to send crew separately, uh, this is it. He's going to go down in the lander, and he's going to take care of this whole min -miss deployment. Okay, well, if that's what he wants, that's what he gets. He's Bill. He's our crankiest of the Kerbals, so he gets his will. Here we are, pushing our orbit out to min -miss, and we have our intercept. I just get it nice and close, and off we go. The planet receding behind us. It looks so cool like that. Every single time I'm leaving Kerbin, I always have to look back at it and look at it just like this. Every single time. Months and months of playing later. Uh, more hours than I care to admit. And uh, every single time I have to look at it. So, uh, I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made last time. We are going to come around the planet uh, or the moon here 
uh, in the same direction that the space station is orbiting, just in case I need to rendezvous with it. I'm not assuming that I'll need to, but just in case, I want to be going the same way. We don't have a lot of fuel left in that lower stage. In fact, I'm a little bit fearful that we might run out. But that's Bill's problem, right? Bill's here. If he runs out of fuel, he has to make the call. He has to decide whether this is going to be orbital debris or not. And uh, I imagine he might be stuck here in a moment because we have probably just enough to uh, capture an, a sort of low orbit. Yeah, but see, we're going to run out. Uh, there's probably fuel available in some of the stages of our landers, but we don't want to use that because we're not entirely sure whether we're going to have enough there too. We probably have plenty, but really there's just no sense in taking any chances. We can always go back and get rid of that later. So let's just leave the fuel that we had in our landers alone, not transfer any, and uh, we'll just we'll just figure it out later with that other one. So we need to uh, orbit several times, and we keep going down so low that we drop out of warp, and then we come back up again. We need to orbit several times because we want to get to the where the light side is, where those rovers are, where the anomaly is. And get both of them on the light side, and then we can start landing there and have plenty of light in order to do it. And now we've decoupled that injection stage. And I think maybe Bill is smarter than all of us because he has some retro rockets on that. And they're still going, so it's uh, because he pointed the craft retro, or actually prograde, and they fire uh, prograde. Well, anyway, it goes backward. Right now, it's actually on its way to deorbit. I think it gets down to three kilometers or something like that. And as long as that can hit some kind of mountain that's sticking up that high, it'll actually crash. Uh, meanwhile, we have five landers that are all stacked together, and I want to make sure that all of the fuel is distributed well between them all. Uh, so we're going to use our TAC fuel balancer here to make sure that all the fuel is equally distributed between all of the di five different landers before we mass decouple them. And all five of them have decoupled. And now we'll rename them so that we can tell them apart on the map. We'll also name them as being a part of a base. Each one will be a base rather than a lander because this whole thing is going to get assembled into a Minmus base with the five different things all connected through Kerbal Attachment pipes. So now we're going to bring down the very first of the landers that will make that base, and that is the uh, Solar Power and Communications Tower. We're going to want that up because that is the central point, sort of, that defines where everything else is going to land. And we've got some robotic hinges on here from Infernal Robotics, and we'll tip those down because we didn't have enough space in the original rocket in order to fit that under the fairing. So I put those gigantic little uh, struts there uh, d so that they were pointed up. But then with the robotics, we'll bring them down. And when it touches down, then we'll also uh, continue extending them just a little bit more. Right now, it's a very wide stance in order to make it land. But once it's landed, then we're going to continue bringing those down, which will push that up that communications tower up even higher. Extend all those solar panels and then extend the actual uh, communications. So this will be our central point. Now the four other landers will all have a target that they can shoot for. We're coming down about, I'd say two kilometers away from the anomaly in the rover. And that's so that we can make sure that we stay safe just in case there's something wrong still over there. We don't know for sure that it's safe. So far, the rover seems to suggest that uh, everything is good. But what if we get over there and it reacts to the presence of a Kerbal and like sucks out his brain or teleports him to another dimension or into an alternate reality or hooks him up to some sort of uh, virtual reality that makes him think that he's actually still walking around but he's really Really inside a computer who knows what could happen with that thing right so here we've we're pushing those legs up just like I described and that'll make this nice and tall so that after we deploy these solar panels we will be able to then deploy our communication dishes pointing one of them at KSS 2 which of course is the Kesla Serenity station and then we'll point the other one back at Kerbin. So in the times when we're actually uh, rotating, when Minmus is rotating such that it's 
able to actually communicate back to Kerbin, we'll have a connection, an uplink right there. And if we can't see that one, we should be able to see the KSS as it flies over every now and then as well. Alrighty, that's going to do it for this time. Next time on the Gateway Project, we are going to launch the S3, S4 truss. Now that would be the big solar panels that are gonna go on the other side. We already have the solar panels on the port. Now it's time to put them on the starboard. Also, we need to continue deploying this Minmus base. And since we have four more landers to bring down, that's probably a decent amount. We'll see what else we can get done next time. But until then, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.